Welcome everyone to the regular meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Town Council. It is Monday, September 11, 2006. Will the clerk please call the roll? Chairman Backer. Present. Councillor Dill. Here. Councillor Fritz. Here. Councillor Lynch. Here. Councillor McKinney. Present. Councillor Moles. Here. Councillor Swift Kayata. Here. Manager McGovern. And as we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, I'd simply like to acknowledge the obvious that this is the five-year anniversary of the terrorist attacks of September 11, 2001, and have everybody bear that in mind as they say the pledge this evening. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic could I have a motion from someone for approval of the minutes of our meeting held on August 14, 2006? So moved. Second. Discussion, comments on the minutes? All those in favor of the motion to approve? The minutes are approved, seven in favor, none opposed. Uh, reports and correspondence. Anyone? Councilor Dill. Uh, I would just like to report as the chairperson of the Road Safety Working Group that we've had some um, terrific feedback and I appreciate that. And we meet again this Wednesday morning. Uh, and at that time, we hope to schedule a public forum. And so I would encourage all of you to continue um, to send feedback. I just wanted to note also that some of you had sent emails that I just got today, so I apologize for not responding. Uh, but we've uh, worked out a kink in the system so that I will get them directly. Thank you. Anyone else? <laughs> Councilor Swift Kayata. The um, comprehensive plan committee is moving along. Um, Councilor Lynch and I are, member, are the town council members of that and we are more than halfway through the various chapters having to do with the various pieces of the comprehensive plan. The group is working well and we're making good progress. We will have a, a, our next public forum is late in the fall, isn't that correct, Marianne? Um, and all the different sections that have been um, approved by the group so far, the working drafts are online if anybody is inclined to read them. So I just wanted to let the council know that the group is uh, progressing on schedule. Thank you for that. Anything else? Um, I have just one thing to note. Um, everybody is probably aware that um, as of last Friday, nomination papers were turned in for the town council and school board elections to be held on November 7. There are four candidates for both uh, town council and school board. Um, I am one of those. That's not what my announcement is. Um, the eight candidates for town council and for school board um, have collectively agreed um, over the weekend to not use any road or yard signs during the campaign. Um, that is not intended to discourage the use of um, road or yard signs by other candidates uh, for other offices um, or f to promote um, positions for or against other political issues or non-political issues that might be on the ballot. Um, but the eight candidates together simply decided that the presence of eight more signs on every corner would simply not add to anything for the citizens of Cape Elizabeth. So there you have it. <laughs> um, town manager's report. Yes, uh, thank you, Chairman Backer. Uh, just a couple of things. First, I want to welcome uh, April Cohen Tracy, a uh, new town clerk. Uh, she's been with us now a couple of weeks and uh, have really enjoyed working with her over the last few weeks. I also want to uh, acknowledge uh, Jackie Coy, who was our acting 
uh, town clerk who helped out in Deborah Lane as well, who uh, was also very helpful uh, during the period since uh, Deb Cabana left. Uh, in fact, everyone in the office really pitched in and uh, appreciate everyone's efforts, but uh, it is good to be back to uh, normal and to have April with us, and uh, I know I look forward to working with her uh, for many years, so welcome, Thank April. You. Uh, second, we, we are still looking for uh, cable TV uh, operators, uh, folks that will do the filming for us. Uh, Jason Lund uh, from the School Technology uh, Department was good enough to come in this evening uh, to help out. He'll be doing the school board, I believe, as well uh, tomorrow night. Uh, so but we, we desperately need folks to, uh, to, to do that. Uh, the, the folks we, we, we have had uh, are either are no longer with us or, or unavailable. And, uh, you know, without having someone to do that, we can't broadcast meetings. And, uh, you know, I just think that's unfortunate. And, you know, we had some technical difficulties at the last meeting, which resulted in it not uh, being fully on the whole time. And we, we really hope to get some more folks to uh, have them train. On that same note, we also noticed today that uh, Elmer Murray, Murray, one of our crossing guards, uh, is planning to leave us uh, as soon as a replacement is found. And that's another position that historically is extremely difficult uh, to fill. So if anyone knows uh, anyone who, who might be interested in serving as a crossing guard, uh, that, would, that would be very helpful. It's, uh, you know, it seems like of all the positions that have been difficult to fill, uh, we're, we're in the, the situation we need to fill a couple of them right now. So uh, appreciate uh, any guidance or assistance on that. I also wanted to mention the sewer projects are, are really coming along well. Uh, the, the one in running Tide Road area uh, is now 99.9% complete. Uh, it's all paved, uh, and the grass is beginning to grow in fairly well and is, is in good shape. Uh, really appreciate everyone's cooperation in that neighborhood, and as well as the contractor. The, uh, the project in the Ocean View Road area has had an initial coat of paving. It's a, it's a real obstacle course right now because they're working on the, the uh, manhole covers raising them in, in advance for the, the final paving, which is a, a routine that you go through, and it, it's, a, it's a really bad obstacle course through there. Uh, but anyway, the, the good news is within, uh, by about uh, two weeks from ten tonight, uh, that project should be at the same state that the Broad Cove one is, 99.9% complete. The, the project in Elizabeth Park uh, has also uh, made good progress. Uh, that, though, is a, is a full month from completion. Uh, at this point, but uh, I really appreciate all the citizens' cooperation uh, with all those projects. I know it's been tough to get in and out of neighborhoods at times. Uh, it's uh, also been a challenge the last week or so for our school buses in getting around uh, some, some of the, the projects. So anyway, appreciate everyone's assistance, particularly the contractors, the engineers, and uh, especially Bob Malley, who uh, has worked very closely with citizens to ensure that their issues get resolved. The, the budget on the projects uh, all appears to be working very well. Uh, expect them all to come in, uh, you know, with minimal change orders, and uh, it's it's gone well. So again, to express everyone's appreciation. Thank you. Thank you. It is now time for citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda. So if there is anyone here this evening who would like to address the council on an item that is not on this evening's agenda, you are welcome to do so at this time. And if you would state your name and address for us and spell your last name, please. May I have a portable mic so people can hear me? Or can you hear me now? We, I think okay. we can hear you fine, thank you. My name is Fred Prince. I'm at 2 Rocky Hill Road. I've been there since 1971. Came here last month, and thinking about last month's meeting, and thinking about what's going on in the town and the state, I came to a couple conclusions, and that is, one, the state is broke, the town is broke, and people have no money to pay their taxes. So I started thinking about it and saying, what we have to do, I think, is not look to what we have done, but look to some new ideas, and see if we can't find new ways of generating income to reduce a tax burden and improve both the lives of the town employees and those of the, of the taxpayers. So I'm going to put forth two ideas, both of which I think one you may have heard of, the other one I'm pretty sure you have not. 
I'm also going to uh, 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 demonstrate, I think, about $660,000 in savings to the town by do doing some th uh, things different than what they're doing right now. And then lastly, I want to talk about a point of order. I'm sorry, the first thing, thing you wanted to talk about was? A point of order. Okay? Income. When I read in the Press Herald that 30 windmills can generate enough power to power 40,000 houses, I did some quick math, and that comes out to about uh, 1,200 houses per windmill. And I thought about it and said, wow, if we had four windmills in the town of Cape Elizabeth, that, cut, that, that powers 6,000 houses, or that pays all the town's power bills, which are $130,000 uh, projected for two, uh, 2007. And in 10 years or 15 years, when they're all paid off, that would generate an income of roughly $6, uh, $6 million a year, if you figure $100 a household times 1,200 houses. $100 a month per household times 1,250 uh, households per windmill, uh, that would be $6 million. So, wow, that's, that's pretty darn good. And we, you could locate them at the dump, or excuse me, the transfer station. The recycling center. The recycle center. <laughs> I've, I've never been there when there hasn't been a great wind. And it'd be using land which we already own to help drive down the costs of the town, uh, both today and in the future and generate income in a time when oil is getting short and people are looking for clean ways of producing uh, energy. That's the first idea. Second idea, you're going to have to sit back because when I first ran it through my mind, I said, this is crazy, it'll never work. And the more I thought about it, the more it made sense. I read in Business Week a while back that the new rage in cemeteries is environmentally correct cemeteries. Now, what is an environmentally correct cemetery? That is a person who is buried without any preservatives, no coffin, and no cement casket. And they put in the ground just a uh, cloth uh, uh, lining. I said, wow, that's really kind of unique. Everybody's involved in the environment. This, this, this could be a very unique idea. And then I thought of the fort. Now, at the fort, we have that field between the lighthouse and that other bunker, which is, uh, has been destroyed by vandals or is being destroyed by vandals, have that great big field, and you can put people in that field, but you're going to say probably, well, if you put people in that field, we're going to have all these markers up. And that destroys the fort. I couldn't agree more. So then I thought about that bunker, which has now a nice round white skull painted on one of the uh, uh, walls. I said, gee, we could finish that bunker off like, uh, like we did the Vietnam Memorial War wall and call it a uh, lighthouse memorial wall or memorial wall, whatever you want to call it. And for $10,000, someone could be buried at the fort, have their name immortalized on that wall, which is now just falling down as a disgrace. And I figured we could put about 3,000 people. And by the way, those people who were cremated, we could put inside that bunker. And when it's finally filled, cement the thing, uh, seal the doors, and that's it. And you have a permanent cemetery with no markers except for what you see in that wall. Now, in case you're thinking I'm crazy, Walk around and look at all the uh, 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 benches and the uh, granite uh, benches, which are also there. And then I was uh, surprised when I took my grandchildren to the children's uh, uh, to the children's play area, and there was a brick saying "In memory of." So we have the markers already. We just don't have the bodies. Okay, and I'm suggesting we consider doing. Uh, op opening this up and using it as a cemetery, which people would sign a waiver so that the field uh, could be used as a field, is, as a fort is used. It's not going to be set aside. It's going to be, uh, it's, it's, it's going to be uh, uh, used as a fort has always been used. Now, I mention that because if you multiply $10,000 times 3,000 people, that's $30 million. And that would kick off at 5%, uh, a million five in income. 750 coming to the town, 750 going to the fort, which is more than what you need. And the reason why I mention that is, why are we going after chump change if we can get, if we can get, get big dollars to solve some big problems? The chump change is the five dollars. The big dollars is doing something which I think could have a real impact on the fort and help do uh, what, what people want done. So those are my two ideas, cost savings. <clears throat> well, first of all, it's $150,000 have saved you in power costs. I read in some emails that one of the things the Fort Committee wants to do is restore the guarded mansion to 
is form a luster, or the, the stones on the outside, not put a roof on it, and that type of thing. They also want to restore the stands by the ball field. And they also want to repair the, uh, re, uh, re, repair the fences. Now, that, that, that's all real good, but it, it doesn't go to what the town has done in the fort in the past. When I first came here, we just took over the fort, and the town decided we could not maintain this whole facility. So we burned down all the buildings, except for a few up in Officers Row, and we buried the uh, most of the, uh, one or two, uh, am I right, Mike, of the gun mounts. It's one, two, or three we buried. We did that to cut down on costs. And I'm looking at that and saying, well, wait a second then, if that's the case, then let's just tear down the guarded mansion. No one goes to see that. And why can't we cover over those cement seats? All they are is just permanent maintenance. I could sit on a grass bank as easy as I can sit on a, a cement seat, and quite frankly, a grass bank would be a lot more comfortable. As far as the fences go, to uh, quote Ronald Reagan, Mr. McGovern, tear down those fences. I was at uh, the Grand Canyon. It's a mile deep, and there are no fences. And I can remember with my kids running through all those rocks, climbing all those cliffs, and having a ball down that fort. Uh, so if you add up all my savings, the 400000 to uh, uh, take down the Guard of Mansion, oh, and then lastly, uh, we, we, we had someone, uh, uh, it was in the emails also, that, uh, that they, they, they felt that we should have uh, brick outhouses, which I think will cost about $100,000 to build because you need more than one. And then you have the constant maintenance on the darn things. And I talked to the uh, guard at the, uh, uh, at the ranger at, at the fort. I asked him how many, how many complaints he got. And we have 250,000 visitors a year. Usually, you get one or two percent complaint. One percent times 250 is, uh, is 2,500. Uh, 2, he said four. I don't think you spend that kind of money for four complaints. I've used them. And if I find a bad one, I go to the next one. There is a choice. You don't have to stay there. There's no gun to your head saying you have to use that outhouse. So if you add all those savings up, there's over $660,000 in savings, which I have uh, shown the town also uh, by taking some what I think are logical steps. And lastly, a point of order. I was given a, a bunch of emails that circulated between the town council and the fork committee and the fork committee which I read with interest, and then I got down to one which was uh, uh, sent up by uh, Ann Swift Cayetta, in which she said that the main right to know access law forbids meeting and discussions at which three or more public officials discuss government business in, in a private setting. And I don't believe that should happen. And that's my point of order, is that I think that this has to be, a, that the fort especially has to be open at all times to all the public so we know exactly what's going on. When the agenda was passed out the last time, the summary from the floor committee said there were 14 points that they wanted to bring up. If you check the report, they had 12. Where are the other two? If you read the emails, they're saying, well, we really don't need a $5 fee. Maybe we should do it by the hour. That should be all discussed in public. And that's my point of order. I think there should be an honest, full, public discussion of this entire issue. This is not just my issue. This is the whole town's issue. This is our gift to the state and to all our visitors. And I thank you. Thank you, Mr. Prince, for all of your comments. Is there anyone else who would like to address the council? Now, I should, I should note, I don't, let me, before you speak, sir, is there anyone else here who would like to speak on an item that is not on our agenda? OK. So. You are it. If you would give us uh, your name and address, please. My name is Jack Sears. I live at 24 Waterhouse Court here in Cape Elizabeth. And I also want to talk briefly about the fort. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to be here at the last meeting, but I am glad to hear the town manager point out that we are trying to find somebody to make sure that the audiovisual system works well, because at the last time I was here, when I was treasurer of the Fort Williams Charitable Foundation, we apparently had no recording and nobody could hear when the then town 
Council Chairperson, Chairwoman, would not allow us to answer questions. Uh, and uh, the last time, uh, the video apparently didn't work. So once is unfortunate, two is careless, three would be downright suspicious. My concern is that I wanted to be here last time to point out that you know, I've opposed fees at the fort, pay for the fort for a long time, but gee, I go out there twice a day with my dogs and maybe I was wrong. Maybe, maybe it's time to reconsider my position. I've been out there and I see people coming from far away, from away, from out of town, Portland, Scarborough, South Portland with their, their dogs, their mongrels, and I'm so afraid that they might cover one of our bitches here in Cape Elizabeth. And it, uh, you know, if we charge five dollars for somebody to come into the fort and walk their dog, that might keep them away. Okay? Uh, the other thing that bothers me is I've testified here before when most of the members of the council weren't here and others were, and I brought in pictures which I had my kids put together back at that point with a Nike sign or a Coke bottle on the Fort William on the, on the uh, lighthouse, and I thought I, I superimposed a driving range on that on that, uh, what, what was the uh, berm out there for, for a backstop for a rifle range uh, prior to World War II and said, if we want to make money, let's be serious about it. Let's go back and really charge. And I think also we ought to consider other things. We could also charge a, a view tax or fee for people to travel on the shore road. I just can't think of anything that would be worse in terms of the public image of this town than saying, okay, let us charge you to go in and see this fort that the government sold us at a penny on the dollar, and then maybe Portland will charge us to use the oaks or go up and look at the view from the eastern prom or the western prom. It strikes me as the worst idea imaginable. We have been fighting it for years and years. It's come up before one after another after another council. And now, even though nobody spoke in favor of it, it's supposed to go to a referendum. Do we have to do this forever? Do we ever learn? Or do we have to keep repeating the same thing? And I will be happy to answer questions. None? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sears. That concludes the citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda, which now permits us to move to our agenda. And the first agenda item is number 1412006, a request for stop signs at the intersection of Spurwink Avenue and Stevenson Street, and I would ask our town manager to introduce this for us, please. Thank you very much, David. I, I know you really can't see this map that well, but let me try to orient uh, this. Uh, as you're coming from Cape Elizabeth, you're coming down Spurwink, there's the turn on Spurwink. This would be into South Portland. This is Stevenson Street, uh, which traditionally has been dirt road, it's been improved a little bit. This is Hamlin Street, and then it goes into Dermot, and what, what was known as the Spurwink Wood subdivision, uh, in the process of the name being changed. When the planning board approved the Spurwink Woods subdivision, uh, they provided that there be stop signs as you're essentially a three-way stop, one coming out of Stevenson, one coming up here on Spurwink, and one coming here on Spurwink. Uh, at your last meeting, uh, one of the, the newer residents of Dermot Court suggested that the stop signs uh, ought to go up before the, uh, Im immediately. Uh, the staff has looked at that. We do believe that it, it is very important to get the stop signs up prior to the construction beginning. Uh, you know, the planning board required this because there was con some concerns uh, with site distance as well as with uh, uh, you know, traffic safety in, in general, uh, and for that reason, before any of the work begins, uh, we feel it would be good to put these stop signs in as they were required from the planning board. Uh, there's a question of, you know, does the, do we, it was a requirement of the developer, do we make the developer pay for it? Under, under the, the usual rules for a subdivision, a, a developer can't actually do any work until they've posted their guarantees and they've posted uh, you, know, the, you know, their letter of credit, their insurance certificates, and the rest of it. The developer is not yet at that point. 
Uh, if we wait for the developer to do it, the developer is welcome to do it at any time during the construction process. What I'd like to do is to have the town uh, put the stop signs uh, in up front and then to approach the developer and ask the developer to pay for the material cost. It's not a, it's not a, a large cost in the big scheme of things. The other thing, by putting them in earlier, it would give uh, citizens the opportunity to get used to the stop signs there uh, before the heavier construction begins. Uh, so it, it is, uh, you know, after hearing from that citizen last month uh, who spoke at length at the council meeting, uh, the staff concurs with, with that citizen uh, that it would be better for the stop signs to go up sooner rather than later. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Can, can you point out where you are proposing to put the stop signs, Michael? This is where, this is the exact plan that was submitted to the planning board and it's what was approved by the planning board. Uh, it's difficult on, on this scale, uh, but first there is a sign that says it's, uh, it's 250 feet ahead there's a stop sign. Uh, there is then a, uh, the proposed stop sign would be at this point, right, right before you get into the intersection there. This one in this lane is right at that point, and the one on Stevenson course is okay. at the end. So one there, one there, and one there. There's, there's a little bit of clearing involved down this end, and all of the clearing, the removal of uh, vegetation as, as exactly had been submitted to the planning board and approved uh, by the planning board. Councilor Fritz. What's the classification of Spearwing Avenue? I'm not an expert on road classifications. I, you know, I think that it's it's a my guess it's it's a feeder street, but I I'm not an expert. I assume it's an arterial. No, no, it's not an arterial. Or a collector. It's either a feeder or, or a collector, and sometimes those terms are used interchangeably. There, there are really no arterials, you know, in Cape Elizabeth by MDOT standards. They don't even call MDOT, uh, Route 77 an arterial anymore. But I mean, we only have really four roads that go north and south in the town, Shore Road, Ocean House Road, Spurwink, and Soy. Mm -hmm. So it's one of our major avenues. That's a judgment and that you can I, make. I yeah. guess I have real problems with the whole idea of having stop signs on Spurwink Avenue. One of the reasons is because we, we have a study committee, which I'm serving on and, and Cynthia is serving on, um, that is looking at road safety issues and how should we deal with traffic, keeping it flowing, but also having safety related issues, dealing with the issues of, of traffic calming. <coughs> And it seems to me that we need to develop, our, our mission is to develop policy on how to deal with the road safety issues. And this is sort of jumping in ahead of that. And I, I think we really need to consider, I, I looked at Spurwink Avenue, uh, this intersection today, and you can come on Stevens Avenue and you can look straight down Spurwink Avenue. You can see whether there are cars coming. Um, it doesn't seem to me it's necessary to stop traffic on Spurling in order to, I mean, this isn't a heavily traveled intersection. There are some sight distance issues. If you're looking on Stevens Avenue down Spurling towards South Portland, uh, but that's a matter of there, there's a lot of brush that has built up and we should be keeping the intersection clear. Um, I don't think we need stop signs at this intersection. And I think we need to think through the policy in the committee that we've set up before we do this. Before we have additional comment, I think we were at opening it up for questions to the town manager. Okay. Before we have additional discussion, can we have a motion? I would move that we um, approve the request for stop signs at the intersection of Spurwing Avenue and Stevenson Street. Second. Motion, Councilor Dill. Second, Councilor Moles. Now, further discussion, Councilor Lynch. I actually do have a question. Yeah, I do too. Okay, for, and that's fine. And, and so if I could still maybe uh, absolutely. discuss Go ahead. later no, because no, I want to respond. If you have a question for Carol, the manager. But I just want to be clear in terms of what's going on. Um, 
planning board has reached a decision on something, on a development, and they have ordered a stop sign to go in as a condition. So all we're doing is the final step, if you will, of what the planning board has already ordered. Is that right? I mean, we would do this in the normal course. It's just that you're moving it up a little bit, Michael, because of the person who came in here last yeah, month. Yeah, true, 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 true you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, the, the citizen came, pointed out the concern, and particularly as we thought of the construction and the construction traffic, that there's potential it would be very good for the stop signs to win earlier and for citizens to become used to them. But the planning board did require them as part of their final approval. And, uh, you know, it's more a matter of timing than it is a, than it is a, a matter of yes or no. Okay. In, in that case, I am very reluctant um, to substitute our judgment for the planning board. They've looked at this under the traffic safety provisions of our ordinance. So I, for one, um, would not want to. Um, overrule something that the planning board has looked at long and hard. Other comments or questions? Okay. All those in favor of the motion, we have Mr. Bryant here, who I know has an interest in this intersection and has for quite a while been a vocal <laughs> citizen with interest in this intersection. Uh, Mr. Bryant, would you like to address the council on this? What was the vote? Did, what was the did vote? we just vote? Did we, just well, vote? we didn't. Just, we didn't vote. Oh, okay. We we haven't voted yet. Everybody raised their hand. Yeah. Why did we all raise our hand? Yeah. Um, called for the vote, but you didn't count it yet. Um, <laughs> I don't think I called for the vote. You did. You did. You said, said, all, you said all in favor. favor. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it was that Monday night. Had an all, out of body experience. Yes, my apologies. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I called for the vote, let's go back to the. I was going to make a comment. I called for the vote before I commented. I was going to say I agree with Councilor Lynch that um, it's, I think it's inappropriate and unwise for the council at this point to try and step in and re-examine an issue with very little detail in front of us that the planning board had in abundance. So for that reason, um, I'm not inclined to question the planning board's decision on this and if it's a matter that the stop signs are going to be installed and the recommendation is that the installation simply be moved up a bit in time for safety, I'm in favor of that. So um, I called for the vote. All those in favor? Mr. Chair. Opposed? The motion is approved. Six in favor, one opposed. I'm sorry, Mr. Bryant. Well, the, we, we don't always open issues for uh, public input before each vote. Um, we're certainly willing to hear you, recognizing that the vote has already taken place. So if the purpose of your comments was to dissuade the council from voting the way it just did, I think your comments um, will not be received the way you would like them to be. Uh, I'll, I'll speak my piece anyway. You may. I'm a little disappointed that you didn't take public input. But uh, merely to, on the question of timing, by the way, I'm Richard Bryant. I live right here. Um, I do agree, generally speaking, that if the planning board has approved this as a condition of approval, town council's got its own decision to make about that. And if they want to defer to the planning board, that's your business. But if the issue is really timing, the board should be aware, as I'm sure the town manager is, that the uh, Spurwink Woods subdivision, although it's received municipal approval, has had its uh, uh, DEP approval appealed. So it's going to be a considerable time before that project ever takes place. And given the disruption of traffic that's going to occur in the arterial, excuse me, I think it's a rural collector street here. And the annoyance to neighbors by having trap every car that goes along Spurwing stop outside my living room window and then drive on, which is the same for all the other neighbors here, I think you, the, the board would be better off deferring until you find out whether this project's really going to be built rather than having traffic stop there for a year before the, for 
you determine whether it's permanent goods, it's really going to get its final approvals. That's my comment. Thank you, Mr. Bryant. Great pollution warning. No. Next. The next item on our agenda is item number 1422006, report update from the Turf Field Study Committee. And would our town manager again like to introduce this item? I'd be happy, Mr. Ch Mr. Chairman. You have in your packet uh, some material from the uh, Turf Field Study Committee. This is committees being very ably led by Wendy Seltzer, uh, the uh, town uh, citizen. And uh, I noticed Michael Ott, I think was, there he is, uh, who, who's also the head of the, the who's the, one of the originators of the Kids Turf uh, idea and is uh, the head of the fundraising committee, which is the separate independent group. And he can fill you in on the fundraising and how that's coming along, but obviously it's, it's, it's coming along very well. Uh, it's been really good to see the school department becoming very engaged and looking at a number of the issues uh, as, as the minutes show. Uh, they've looked extensively at the different issues of field use and at maintenance cost and uh, uh, the, the whole host of issues that involve the, uh, uh, the, the turf field. There, there is a specific recommendation uh, which the committee's made, which I think would be good to, this would be a timely uh, time to consider. Uh, and that involves the, uh, the fund that will be used 15 years from now uh, to replace the field. Uh, the, uh, the overall fundraising goal is 650, and while they've made great progress, they're still a little short, but they've, they've made terrific progress. Uh, what, the, what the turf field committee proposes, and what, what I fully support, is that the council uh, fund that $50,000 up front uh, through our undesignated surplus. And I've got the statistics that show that our undesignated surplus is at a, at a good point now, and I, I can share those with you. Uh, and, and that we put those monies into an interest-bearing account uh, that the town holds, holds possession of. There'd be no check going to, uh, to any independent group. Uh, and that, that those funds accrue interest. If you look at particularly the work Kevin Sweeney's done from the, the school board, uh, the proposal is, in, you know, as, as the council originally discussed, was to put 50000 into an account, uh, although it was hoped that it would be fundraised, it wouldn't be the town putting it into the account, and that the town and the school board would each uh, put in an amount each year. Uh, I think it would be a good impetus to complete the fundraising uh, with the town placing, a, a, in essence, it's, it's less than 10 percent of the total cost um, of the project um, in, in a municipal account uh, to begin the work to ensure that the, in 15 years from now that the replacement uh, will be able to be accomplished. It's not actually giving money directly to the Kids Tariff Group, but it, it is, in essence, reducing the amount that they, that they will need to raise from 650,000 down to 600,000. And I think this also needs to be looked at in the context is what they're raising funds for now is really only phase one of the project. Uh, th there's also a phase two of the project, which includes uh, uh, bleachers, which includes concession stand, and other improvements that has about a $300,000 cost to it. So, you know, out of a, a total cost of, you know, almost 900,000 by the time this gets done, uh, the town's participation would be uh, 50,000 or approximately, uh, you know, a little more than 5% uh, of, the, of the overall cost. And, you know, again, I want to emphasize that, you know, the money's not going anywhere. It's staying in an account if for some reason the, the final, you know, fundraising, uh, you know, wasn't successful or whatever, or there was concern about the pledges and whether or not to be met, the town is still retaining control of the money, it is just designating it in uh, this interest-bearing account uh, for the, the benefit of the replacement of the field 15 years from now per the discussion that the council had at a workshop. The only difference is from your workshop, and I'm, I'm well aware of it, is that the town would be putting the money in the 50 instead of requiring it to be part of uh, the fundraising of the independent group. So, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for that introduction. And before we have a motion on this, um, Michael Ott, would you be willing to give the council an update on where the Kids Turf Committee stands in its fundraising I'd, efforts? I'd be happy to. Um, 
First of all, I just wanted to say that uh, for me personally, uh, this has been a very rewarding uh, experience, and I'm sure I speak for all the people on our uh, uh, committee as well. Um, I don't know if you've all had a chance to see, but the lights are up on that lower field. They're not connected yet, but you see the poles are up, the lights are up. Uh, the National Guard put those in uh, this weekend at a considerable cost savings uh, to the effort and to the town. And uh, I think we owe great thanks to um, Graham Smith uh, for just an, an enormous amount of work uh, he put in to make this happen along with Doug Courier and, and Jim Croft and Jay Evans. And if I've forgotten other people, I'm sure I have, I apologize to them. Um, you know, obviously we will not be installing the field this fall as we had hoped. Um, we have not raised the necessary funds. We realize that those funds need to be in the bank for that construction to, um, to proceed. Uh, we are targeting this spring, so we'll be fundraising throughout this fall and in the early winter. Um, if we cannot uh, install the field this spring, we're going to return people's money. We feel it's only fair. We don't want to hold people's money that long without uh, a successful installation to the field. Um, you know, along the way, I just want to share a couple um, uh, inspirational stories, you know, of what some citizens have done, and I think really fantastic. Um, the Cape Elizabeth football team um, held a uh, fundraiser called a Lift-a-thon, and they all got together and uh, received pledges for every pound they lifted, you know, in their, in their training. And, uh, and their coaches all, the coaching team, the coaching staff all personally donated to this effort as well. So a lot of commitment from them. You know, they gave us a check for $1,100 um, a couple weeks ago. It's great to see the kids getting involved in this because they see the benefit. You know, they want to play Friday Night Lights football just like most communities do in Maine. Another one is, I don't know if people had a chance to go to the art uh, show. Michael, I saw you. Uh, there this Saturday. We have a local artist, her name is Andrea Koros. Uh, she moved here about a, a year ago and she um, created a beautiful painting and held a raffle and a local Cape Citizen won that raffle and all the proceeds from that and 30% and of her net take um, she donated to Kids Turf. You know, just little things like that. People are doing whatever they can. I had a, uh, a young man a couple weeks ago who cuts lawns in his spare time. Uh, said, Mr. Ott, I'd like to so I was gonna lie. He said, I want to donate, you know, some money to the Kids Turf campaign. I had another young man who delivers newspapers, you know, come up to me and, and uh, give me money for the campaign. And, um, you know, everywhere I go, everywhere I go, I see kids all the time. And they say, Mr. Ott, you know, is this going to happen? Are we going to get that field? And I look them in the eye and I say, you're darn right we are. So we're working hard to make that happen. Um, I've spoken to seven different communities over the last um, month or so. Uh, these are people that have installed one of these fields. And everyone has just said it's been a, a huge boost to their community. It's been an absolutely, it's a, one of the best things they've ever done. So just as that as an anecdote. Um, as far as the fundraising um, goes, uh, I've got some good news and some bad news. Um, the good news is um, we have $250,000 in the bank, so we've been slowly collecting on pledges. Um, I've got some bad news over the um, over the weekend, we lost a significant pledge. Um, somebody was going to use stock, appreciated stock. Uh, that's fell dramatically. So the net net is um, our current uh, pledge total is about 440000 uh, But we're going to get there. Um, we have um, a direct mail campaign going out, um, I'd say, by the end of the month, uh, probably sooner. Um, that'll go to every single citizen in Cape Elizabeth. And uh, we have some other ideas um, to generate the funds throughout the winter, and we'll get the job done. And I thank you for your consideration on this matter. Well, thank you for that report. Thank you for your efforts and raising $440,000 in pledges since. When did you start? I don't do time very well. I couldn't tell you. I don't know, six, seven months ago, maybe? It is a very impressive achievement. Thank you. So thank you for that report. Any questions for Mr. Hyatt, members of the council? None, thank you, Michael. Do we have a motion with regard to the proposed transfer of $50,000 from the undesignated surplus account? So moved. I, I move that we, we um take $50,000 from the un undesignated surplus and set up a municipal fund 
for the purpose of replacing the kids' turf field 15 years hence? Second. Uh, motion, Councilor McKinney. Second, Councilor Moles. Discussion on the motion, Should Councilor Dill. I have a question. Um, is the, um, the interest the same interest that would accrue on the $50,000 set aside in the special fund as it would be in the undesignated surplus? In other words, is, are we getting the same return for the investment? Yes, we are. Well, and in fact, I think the motion should be clarified okay. to, to say that the interest um, that the fund will receive will be based on the average balance in the account and the average rate of return on municipal investments, which was in the memo that the town manager sent to us. And does okay. Councilor McKinney accept that? I, I accept that friendly amendment. Yes. And second. Discussion on the motion? Um, well, I guess maybe I'd like an explanation of that uh, paragraph. I guess I was reading it that maybe we were making a $50,000 contribution every year plus the $7,000 that's in here. And so I'd like more explanation on that. Sure, I think what, either one. It's, it's not an every year. It's a one-time contribution, the $50,000. It's a one-time designation set aside to start the pot growing for the replacement cost right. whenever that replacement takes place, whether it's 12 years or 15 years hence. But I guess I'm, I'm wanting an explanation of the phrase, and the fund received investment revenue each year based on the average balance. So it's just. I, yeah. I, 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 I think the town manager can probably address that better, but I think that goes to Councillor Dill's question as well as to how is the interest computed on it. And I'll let right. the town manager address that. Uh, rather than put dollars in separate accounts for all the different town funds, each, each year in June, when, just as our auditors are coming in, we look at the total amount of investment that's been earned during the year. We then look at the high rate and the low rate. And they come up with the average, so the auditors do it. And we apply to each of the different funds uh, investment earnings based on the average balance in that fund for the previous year. And this would set up this fund much as the sewer fund, the land acquisition fund, the, uh, the different cemetery funds. It would be, it would be treated uh, exactly the same as the others. Okay. And are we not voting on the seven thousand dollar? No. Investment. No, that's not or up. Maintenance. That's not up for council consideration tonight. There hasn't been a formal recommendation from the turf field committee on that long-term funding element of the field. Subject to budget vote still. Right. I'm sorry, what did, Michael? What it's also subject to budget votes. You know, every, you, you can't mandate that something's going to be in the budget for the next I just couldn't years. hear you, that's all, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, so this, this field is one that we don't currently maintain this year. It, it's a brand new field, is that correct? Or have we been maintaining this field? Yeah. We maintain it. We, just, it's not a turf field, it's a natural field right now. So it is a natural field. It's not a brand new. They're going to replace the natural with right. the turf. So we well, have. Yeah. Th this, this, is a, this is a field. I'm sorry, Councilor Mills. Go ahead. This, this is a long standing field behind the high school that we've been maintaining for years and recently actually spent quite a bit of money to rebuild the base under it, gravel, et cetera, and reseed the field, except the seed didn't take. So we weren't able to use it this year. However, it's in a perfect location for a turf field because of all the new gravel and work we did underneath the field that would allow a turf field to drain properly, which is one of the reasons, among many, that this was selected as a perfect spot for a turf field. Uh, but in the report from the uh, committee, they give examples of how, over time, putting in the turf would save the town and the maintenance cost of the, the grass field. Um, I did want to make one real brief note on the report from the committee. Uh, they note in here that at the last meeting uh, not attending were Carol Fritz and Mike Moles. And uh, for those that happen to follow this uh, record, uh, apparently Superintendent Alan Hawkins has been the one that's been sending out meeting notes. And I spoke to him the other day, and he had accidentally had my 
email address wrong, and I had not been informed of uh, the meeting time and had thus missed the meeting. So uh, I want the committee members to know that I fully support the uh, turf field and what they're working on. Unfortunately, I just didn't get the memo. So. Thank you. And I had a substitute filling my seat <laughs> on that committee. So. Was that me? Yes. yes. I was there. <laughs> um, further questions? No, I think. Or comments? I think. I think. All those in favor of the motion as made and seconded? Opposed? The motion is approved seven in favor, none opposed. Thank you, Mr. Ott, for coming. Thank you. Our next agenda item is 143-2006, proposed amendments to traffic regulations. Uh, Councilor Fritz? If I might, um, as chair of the ordinance committee, uh, we have not been able to meet on this particular traffic regulation because I was away for uh, several weeks. Um, I would not object myself to putting this up for public hearing uh, for the next meeting. Um, I didn't find anything I disagreed with. I don't know how the other members of the committee the ordinance committee feel, Cynthia and um, Marianne. Um, again, we haven't had a chance to meet, so we don't have recommendations and haven't discussed it. But I don't have any problem with the way it's worded. Is, um, for our town manager, is there a time sensitive issue here that would require that we set it for a public hearing next month, or is it appropriate to table this to give the ordinance committee an opportunity to look at it? before we set it for public hearing. There's, there's no real time sensitivity to it. So for the benefit of the ordinance committee, should, um, would you like to have an opportunity to consider it before we set it for public hearing? How do you feel? <laughs> I think that makes sense. If, if it's not time sensitive, I don't see why we wouldn't table it until we meet and then put out to public hearing what we've looked at. Considered. Okay. Well, we don't have any, any pressing time issues on it. I'm open to meeting as the ordinance committee and considering it, and I'm also open to setting the public hearing. So I know that's not helpful. But that's my position. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I'll, I'll move that we table this issue then um, okay. until the ordinance committee has a chance to meet and make recommendations. And do we have a second on the motion to table? Second. Table the next. Could I, I'm sorry, could, council meeting. Was, so was it table, what was the motion? To table, table to? Table till the next council meeting. Okay, thank you. To give the ordinance committee an opportunity to. Yes, I just didn't know when it was tabled until. And I'll second that motion. All those in favor of the motion? Opposed? The motion is approved and the item is, the, it is approved seven in favor, none opposed, and the item is tabled until our um, October uh, 12th meeting. The next agenda item is 144-2006, a request from the town manager to set aside $68,520 in the debt stabilization fund for a one-year increase in the fiscal year 2008 budget in needed debt service payments. Michael, I will let you pass these on. explain this. Keep one, and if the, the I thought I had more, and I, I apparently didn't print enough, so we can share. We can share. They can share. We, we, we can, can share. share. Here. As, I've just what, looked at what, what this shows. Uh, the town in the past has agreed to certain debt for uh, different projects in town, including the the 35 percent of the sewer drainage project that's being funded by the general fund. And just to, for those that can see this, this is the fiscal year, the first bar is the fiscal year 2006 line, excuse me, 2007. The next one, it goes up, it's the 2008, and then from 2009, it goes down in a, in a gradual pace until 2020. 
and then it, it goes down quite a bit the next two years, and then it goes down to a minimal level uh, the, the last five years of this, which is solely from the, the most recent bonding. So what we have is this one-year increase of 68,000, and then it decreases the year after by over 100,000. The, the issue is, is if we, there's a couple of different issues. Uh, in the past, the town has set up when, it, when it's known debt service, when you're going to have a couple of spikes, so as not to over collect from the taxpayers in essence. Uh, we've, we've set up something called the debt stabilization fund, where monies have generally been held in June. Uh, monies have been appropriated in June for the debt stabilization fund, so as a result, the budget did not need to go up as much. In the, it, it was actually done for, uh, I called it, we called it the, the Facilities 2000 projects. So it would not have to be done to sort of artificially inflate the budget those two years. Quite frankly, at this point, if Tabor passes, which is a possibility, this could very likely, just this one year spike, take the entire amount that might be available for municipal spending increase, absent a council vote to override Tabor, a, in a citizen vote to override Tabor. Uh, it could take the whole spike out of it. So w with the surplus now at 103.44% of the target, or in combined school town 81,000 over, and with the overlay that was part of the tax commitment this year, amounting to $256,000, it seems like a fiscally prudent thing to do in the town manager's view to, in essence, to budget now to, to fund out of the undesignated surplus that spike for that one year. So in other words, it would not need to be raised for next year's budget, and the budget in fiscal year 09 would not be based on just that spike. So it, it's, it's, it's really a, an attempt to level off. There is past precedent on it, and it could be very, very helpful as the fiscal year 2008 is budget is considered in, a, in what could very likely be a, a new fiscal environment, a new financial environment. So I would encourage you to appropriate the 68000 uh, $520 to the debt stabilization fund to take care of that spike for that one year. Thank you for that explanation. Do we have a motion? I'll be happy to make the motion. No, go ahead. No, no please do. Okay. Um, I would make a motion that we set aside $68,520 from the undesignated surplus into the debt stabilization fund. That's correct. Uh, for a one-year increase in, to cover a one-year increase in the fiscal year 2008 budget for needed debt service payments. Second motion. Second, Councillor McKinney. Discussion on the motion? Councillor swift -Kayette. I have a question for the manager. Um, Michael, could you uh, let us know after this $68,520 and after also the, uh, the $50,000 deduction for the artificial turf field that we just voted on. What does that do to our um, undesignated fund balance? Where would we be? I think you mentioned we were currently before the, was that before the two votes or after the two votes we were at 103%? Uh, before the two votes. Okay, so after the two votes? Right be? now, the, as of June 30, 2000, I always forget what year we're in, June 30, 2006, the combined town school undesignated fund balance was 2,451,000. The target based on council policy was 2,370,000. The difference is $81,412. Uh, you just reduce that by 50,000 with the previous vote, that reduces it to 31,000. This would seem to reduce it down to 19,000 under the target except for the fact that the fiscal year 2007 overlay is 256000 So with that 256000 we'll still have 230000 with all other factors being equal, towards meeting the target and the support of next, of next year's budget. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Dill. Yes, thank you. I have... Um Three questions. Um, one, if you could briefly explain the overlay, what it is. Uh, the, yeah. Go ahead. 
Oh, you want to do all three? No, you, I'd rather get the okay. answer first. The, the overlay is when the tax rate is set, uh, it's based on a certain assumed amount of valuation. If the valuation comes in higher than the assumed amount, which we always leave some flexibility for, the, 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 if you apply the tax rate of $16.16, .16, whatever it is, times the valuation that's added above and beyond the projection, that, that projected an additional $256,000 worth of income than the budget showed that we, than we, that we actually needed. That's called the overlay. And that is for dealing with abatements. For example, next month the council will be dealing with an abatement request, as you did last month. But you're dealing with one next month for someone whose acreage was wrong. Uh, who, you know, so you, do, you deal with it, and uh, Matt Sturgis, the assessor, also deals with abatement requests during the year. And I think he's, he's got six or eight that are, that are pending now as a result of the tax bills having just gone out. But it will nowhere take the 256000 Okay, thank you. My second question is the $68,000 that um, is represented by the bar graph, the difference between 2007 and 2008, I think you said that that was your prediction or um, application of TABOR and would be the amount that the entire municipal budget would increase, or did I hear that wrong? We, you might have heard that, but that's not what I intended. Okay. Uh, the $68,000 is exactly the amount that the debt service line will have to increase in next year's budget because of known debt service that's already an obligation of the community. Yes. The debt has already been, the money's already been borrowed, the interest rates are set. We know that we're going to have to increase that line item by $68,000. Uh, we do not yet know the exact amount that Tabor will affect us for next year. What we do know is this, if Tabor had been in effect this past year, that the amount the budget would have been able to increase was 1 20th of 1%, uh, was the original projection in MMA. And I've also heard 1.5%. You know, there's different things out there. But if you look at a municipal budget, you know, it's not 10 million, but if you looked at 10 million, 1% is, is 100,000. Uh, and the budget's not 10 million, so the 68,000 is, you know, would, would in essence take the entire possible increase in the budget would go for that one item. Everything else would need to be flat. And again, with Tabor, we're still only dealing with projections and no one, no one, no one really knows at this point. Thank you. That's only two questions, but you answered all of them. Okay. <laughs> Other questions? Councilor Lynch, it's hard to talk about undesignated surplus without looking at you. <laughs> No, I think we're going in the right direction on the undesignated surplus. That's what I thought you'd say. <laughs> um, hearing no other comments, all those in favor of the motion? Opposed? The motion is approved. Seven in favor, none opposed. Thank you. The next item on our agenda is number 145-2006. Ballot question and warrant for pay display question dealing with Fort Williams Park. Mr. Manager. Yes, the council uh, discussed this uh, last month uh, following the public hearing on the Fort Williams fee issue. Uh, it, on that evening, you voted to, move, to seek to move ahead with a uh, ballot question. Uh, I forwarded it to the town attorney. The town attorney came up with some language, would you favor the town establishing a paid display parking program at Fort Williams Park? Uh, if you wish to go forward with this, uh, it, the vote needs to occur tonight because April needs to be in touch with uh, the ballot printing company because absentee ballots need to be available right away. Uh, there is a draft of a little more language that based on an email I received today from Councillor Lynch uh, that, that she wanted a little more language and I have that before you with her, her revised language. But uh, this is the language that the town attorney came up with and by your action tonight you'd be approving the ballot question and the warrant, you know, the legal language. I don't think we actually have it ready to be signed tonight, the warrant, but you'd be, you'd be authorizing the warrant to be signed and then uh, you'd sign it uh, between now and the election. David, may I speak to the language? Um, you may. Okay. 
Um, the language, just really as much for the public that's here, the language that the town attorney had recommended was, would you favor the town establishing a pay display parking program for Fort Williams Park? I have circulated new language to um, the council and ask that we consider um, a slight expansion of that to make clear that a pay display system would be used for the purpose of funding park operations. So the language I've circulated is, would you favor the town establishing a pay display parking program at Fort Williams Park to support park maintenance and improvements? So that's the language I have, and that I think just represents the proposal that had come to us from the citizens group, um, which was very clear in that it was to be used for park um, programs only. There seems to be some feeling that it will be used as a cash cow to support um, other things, um, and that's just certainly not the intent of um, those who brought the proposal to us. Thank you. Do we have a motion? Well, Councilor Lynch. I guess I will make a motion um, that we put out to the vote, in, mm -hmm. to the voters in a referendum in November. Uh, the question, would you favor the town establishing a pay display parking program at Fort Williams Park to support park maintenance and improvements? Second. Second. Councilor Dill, discussion on the motion. I assume the motion also includes to authorize the town council to sign the warrant yes, uh, for that reference. to do all things necessary to make it possible. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Discussion on the motion, Councillor Fritz. Well, I'm just wondering if, um, I mean, I see some faces of people who have some interest in Fort Williams, and I'm just wondering whether we can get some comments mm. if, if mm. people are interested. <clears throat> Is this is not a public hearing understood, but the council is not inclined to to stifle someone who would like to speak. Is there anyone here who would like to speak on this issue? Can we just see a show of hands to get a sense of how many people are here who would like to? Just three. Okay. Um, if you would each like to speak, we'll give you, in accordance with our public hearing rules, three minutes. Who would like to go first? Um, is the, I just want to clarify, are they speaking to, this, to the subject of having the referendum, or are we going to rehash the feelings about the a, a, merits of A fair question. And what is up for the motion is the wording of the proposed referendum to be placed on the November ballot. In other words, whether it should be placed on the ballot at all, and if so, what the wording should be. It's not a reopening of the whole discussion pro or con on the pay display system. But you are welcome to come up and speak. Um, I would ask that you state your name. Uh, please spell your last name for the benefit of the town clerk and give us your um, residence address, please. All right. I'm Emily Matterson, M-A-T-E-R-S-O-N. I live at 2 Charles Road. And um, I am opposed to the referendum because we had a vote on it. And it seems to me the referendum isn't binding. And so then what is the purpose of it? That's my first observation. And then I did email Marianne Lynch today. And she said, which she just spoke to now, about the fees being only for maintenance of the fort and the capital improvements, I believe. But the fact is, if you use the fees for maintenance of the fort, the monies designated now for that maintenance will then be diverted to other things. So in effect, isn't that the same thing as using fees for other purposes? Well, I'll try and answer that. Um, the anticipated fees that would be raised from the pay display system are not contemplated to be sufficient to totally fund the maintenance of the park. And rather, it was intended to be to supplement um, existing budget the purpose allocations for the purpose of maintaining the park. But I, th I thought it was to make major improvements, such as the 
uh, stone structure of the Goddard Mansion and the bleachers, which I agree with Mr. Prince. I think the bleachers well, should be Well, let me better. try and address it a little bit more, but it, it, and preface it with the understanding, and as you probably know, that last month I voted against approval of the pay display, but I did vote in favor of putting it out for public referendum. Well, if the referendum isn't binding, if it's only advisory, really, what is the point of it? The point is to give the council a sense of the pulse of the community as to whether a majority of the members of our community do favor pay display or whether they would but prefer that they're not. But we had a public hearing on it last month, and those that cared could have appeared here and spoken. And they, they could have. Um, but if you would like to allocate more of your time to giving us your thoughts and your opinions on the merits of putting it out for pay display, now is really the appropriate time to give us that. And what do you want my input in and the any, merits of putting any, it forth for a referendum? Any aspect of your views on whether the referendum should be put out for public vote and the wording of it? Well, I'm fine with the wording. I think the wording is appropriate. I, I do still question the fact about the maintenance and the improvements. And I think that this doesn't say at all what the cost of the town will be to implement this. You know, the, the vehicle needed, the policing of it, what would happen if people just decide not to pay for it, the implementation of whatever kind of um, machinery will be needed, the salary, the benefits. Uh, I don't know, there would have to probably be two people that would do this work, I would imagine, at least two. I mean, that hasn't been discussed at all, as far as I know. I don't think even a traffic study has been done. My husband was at the fort one day last week, and he said the town would have made $30 today, and that's in the summer. I mean, I don't know. Is this really a wise thing to be considering at all, to let alone go to the expense of putting it to, into a referendum, which then is basically meaningless? I mean, I do wonder if the referendum goes one way, will the town accept it, the town councilors, or another way, will they not? Could we know, be assured about that one way or the other? Well, this is, this is a time for us to receive comment. And that's what we're doing at this point. Well, so. that's a comment in the form of a question. Okay. Well, thank you for the comment. OK. Thank you. Betty Crane, behind Starboard Drive. Um, as you all know, I'm opposed to fees, but uh, I will go by, I would like to go by with the way the council voted last time, which was no fees, but then, of course, we put it out to referendum, which I was disappointed that it had to go that way, I must admit, but on the other hand, I also have to admit that it's a free country and everybody's vote counts. So. It goes to referendum. I don't like the wording because it does not say fee anywhere. And I think pay display, I mean, we all know what pay display is. We've been interested, we've been listening. But I think a lot of um, the citizens are going to say, what is pay display? It would be their own fault not going before, reading, and so forth, but even so, I would rather, I mean, it is a fee, let's face it. So either you're for fees or you're against fees. That's my opinion, take it as it was. I was happy to see so many people come out the last time, and I think the fact that no people came out for fees doesn't necessarily indicate that there are no people that are for fees. But I think the scope of the people that came out, the different ages, the different backgrounds and so forth, so many of them against it had given it a lot of thought. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Crane. Mr. Berry. <laughs> Thank you. 
Mr. Chairman, my name is Henry Berry. Uh, I have been a domiciliary of 110 Two Lights Road in Cape Elizabeth since April, 6, April 7, 1961. Uh, I served two terms on the council at that time. That was the first town council in 1967 to 1971. And then two more terms more recently, and this question has come up repeatedly. Studies have been done on the financial impact, and uh, it has always come out that we had to pay employees and so forth. I know this is not a rehash of uh, last month's uh, near unanimous opposition to fees. This is only the question on the referendum. I think that a referendum, I, I agree with the previous speaker, that the referendum is useless because it's not binding. So it'll be interesting to see which of the four supporting no fees will have the courage <clears throat> to hold their position. Thank you. Mr. Prince, you know me. Fred Prince, Two Rocky Hill Road, Cape Elizabeth. My son, uh, when we were walking through the fort, I was talking about this problem, had a wonderful idea. So why don't we call Viagra and we'll let them put the name of, the, uh, of Viagra on the, on the lighthouse as an advertising symbol. My thought, I said, wow, we could get about $250,000 for that. That's a great idea. But then I thought about it, I said, wait, that doesn't really go with the spirit, with the history of Fort Williams and of the lighthouse. It's a historic monument. You don't desecrate it with advertising. I don't think you desecrate also something which I paid taxes on for 39 years to keep free for other people. And the reason why I say this, because that's not what the issue which was, was up here, is I thought, frankly, the way the council acted last month was a disgrace. You had a fair and open discussion. You invited all the citizens to attend. No one attended from the other side. You took a vote. The side that showed up won, and you should have let it go. If anybody should have called for a referendum, it should have been the citizens and not the town council. You're like a bunch of spoiled kids. You lost your game, so you turn around and you, will, you go a different way. So now we started off when the vote was ended. You said, well, it'll be a binding, a binding vote. Then all of a sudden, it's not a binding vote. So now we go out, and you guys win. You get your fee. Is that then going to be binding? Let's say we win. And I guarantee you we will. Is that going to be non-binding? When does this finally end? When do we start having these discussions? The town wants a free fort for all the citizens of this country. It does not want a fee. We've said that since 1967. We had a group of people who offered to raise four million dollars to fund the fort. They were turned down with a yawn. I was at that meeting. Couldn't believe it. This has got to be resolved at some time because I don't really want to pay my taxes for the next 30 years, I hope, if I live in this town, and then see that all lost because some town council with new people on it that don't understand the history of the town Voted, uh, voted in fees because they're looking for some way to do something else to the fort which has not been brought out yet. And the emails show that. That's where I'm really upset. The agenda is that the fees are not to pay for the maintenance of the fort. The fees are to improve the guarded mansion. The fees are to put in brick outhouses. The fees are to, and that's all the emails. I got them. Okay? And the fees are to do, maintain the, uh, uh, the steps on the uh, uh, for it, on, on the play field. Bring out the true agenda and let's make this a fair vote. If you're going to bring it to a vote, fine. As a previous speaker said, put the word fees in there and put in Fort Williams. Not like tonight's meeting, right? Two people asked me, is, this, is Fort Williams on the agenda? You may all know pay, uh, 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 pay and view, whatever you call it. The rest of us don't. We know it is fees. Call it what it is. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Prince. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have a motion. We've had a second. We've had comment. Is I'm sorry. Is there one other? I'm sorry. Did you want to speak or ask a question? If you'd like to speak, you're welcome to.
Uh, Laurie Jensen, 9 Cragmore. Um, I am, I think I mentioned last time, I am new to town. I've been here for two years, but um, my husband's grandparents live in the house or on the land where we are. So we've been, basically the land has been in our family for over 100 years. So I'm new and yet I'm not new to town. I've been here for a long time. Um, I guess I have, I have questions, but I'm not going to ask questions, so I'll just... Oh, just ask your comments. question. I'm sorry? Just ask your question. Okay, my question is, if, if the vote gets passed, if the, if the referendum indicates that the town people are for a fee, there's nothing indicating that it's a $5 fee or a $1 fee or a $2 fee. If you do pass it, and I guess it's up to you guys to decide how much it's going to be, can that be changed? I mean, if you find that there are things that are not working, anything can be changed the next year? And sure, yeah. they, anything can be changed? Anything okay. can be changed. We, 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 yeah. the, the fee structure is up to the advisory board and the council. Okay. Uh, in Tabor. In, in Tabor. <laughs> okay. But, but anything can be changed. It's okay. not, not carbon stone. I'm also wondering if anybody has been over there in particular today to see that the, the amount of traffic that's there when the cruise ships comes in. Um, I'm still concerned, that, again, that if, if it's a $5 fee, that there's going to be a big traffic concern. I have a lot of little concerns, which is why I've been emailing so many people. Um, but I think those are my major questions, is that nothing would be set in stone if you decide there's a $5 fee, if the, if the town goes along with it, that it can be rescinded or trade changed or whatever. So basically, that's what I wanted to know. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Jensen. Thanks. Chairman, if I might elaborate on that, as I understand it, <clears throat> The, uh, the vote is in November, and depending on the outcome of that vote, the new council year starts in December. We, the council has already decided last month to turn down the current proposed pay display system, so it would have to be brought back up again. I would assume it could not be really truly brought back up until the December meeting, which is certainly uh, probably before a Tabor could be implemented, but it would probably be at, I would assume, the December meeting and it would have to come back, and there'd be a great deal of discussion on ex at that council meeting amongst the council how that system would be implemented if a large majority of the town voters said, yes, we want a uh, pay display system, although I find that unlikely. Can I ask a question, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Berry, this was for comment, and I'd really prefer to leave it for comment rather than a, a panel discussion with the council at this point. Um, is it germane to the referendum? Answer that. Yeah. Um, the town manager would like to address that, Mr. Berry. Yeah, uh, Henry, as you know, I prepared the agenda with the direction, with the consent of the chairman. Uh, there was no intent not to imply it was Fort Williams. You know, it says ballot question and warrant for paid display question. It's been very, very widely publicized that this paid mm -hmm. display thing applies to Fort Williams. Every newspaper has had it. Uh, you know, for those interested in the issue, they know that it relates to Fort Williams. There's, yeah, I, I regret that there was, it was the assumption, maybe incorrect on my part, that folks n knew when we were talking about paid display that it involved this, this issue involving Fort Williams. Certainly, uh, it's, it's been around quite a bit, so thank you. If, if I may, on a couple of items. First, it was um, very clearly stated as um, Fort Williams in the attachment to the agenda, I realize we would have all liked to have had it right on the body, but it clearly was in the attachment. Um, but it, I just want to uh, say um, that I think every, every, all of these issues are issues of stewardship, and there are only a certain number of ways to pay for the park. There's philanthropy through the Fort Williams Charitable Foundation. There's taxes. There's fees. Now. Other people have brought up some new ideas tonight, such as burial grounds and um, others. There, so there are probably a variety of ways, but 
Um, I see this vote as an invitation to the whole community to discuss how we're going to provide stewardship for the park. And the park's needs are identified in a number of reports that have been prepared by the Fort Williams Advisory Commission over the last, what, 10, 20 years, Mike? Those reports are all in the library. Um, and I would encourage the public, and I'd encourage the reporters to go look at the reports, to um, take a look at what other independent advisory people have been saying we need to do. Um, and then if the public decides that they'd rather do it through taxes, I, I for one, although it's an advisory election, I for one will feel very bound by what the majority says because in, in the final analysis, this is representative government. And I think what we're doing is we're asking the public to weigh in on an issue that is, um, you know, almost one of sacred ground in this town, and um, people feel very strongly about how we should provide the stewardship for the fort. So I encourage the discussion over the um, few weeks and would encourage the reporters to take a look at those reports, and I encourage um, both sides of the issue to send your letters to the courier, and we'll all um, get involved in educating the public. Further, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, further comment from the council? We have, we have, a, we have a motion and we have a second. We have a, motion. <clears throat> okay, we just, a motion was made and seconded. Um, further discussion? Was Councilor Socata? No? Councilor no. Dill? Yeah, I would just like to address um, some of the um, points that were raised by some of the people in the audience. As um, some of you have commented, I'm a so called newcomer and i um, happy to be here. It's been a good experience, and I truly am here to serve the citizens of Cape Elizabeth. And I'll note that um, although 28 people, I believe, spoke at the last hearing, um, that is, um, according to my math, a 0.03% uh, percent of the population that's come forward. And in the short time that I've been on the council, I've had a number of conversations with people, and in particular, I'm thinking of the school budget hearing where I believe that there was an equal number of people who supported fees at the park. And so from my perspective, when I'm making decisions on the big picture and not just seeing things in a snapshot um, display like the hearing, you need to make decisions based on the big picture and it would be helpful to have a referendum because that way all the people that came out in the budget hearings who were in support of charging at the fort, and I will note that many of you weren't at that meeting uh, voicing your objection at the time. Um, they can come out and be educated and, and vote, and you obviously are going to have an opportunity to express yourself, and that can guide all of us in making decisions on the big picture about how to go forward. I also, I also think the timing is good in this particular election because as a voter goes into the booth, he or she is going to be asked to vote not only on Fort fees, but on Tabor. And to some of us, there's an inconsistency in logic in voting for Tabor and not charging at the park. And it's my belief that we will get a better um, uh, informed citizenry if people have to, on the one hand, study what Tabor will do, and on the other hand, make a commitment to supporting the maintenance and improvements of the park through taxation. Um, and I'm sorry that it, it is characterized by some people as us versus them because um, I really see it as a group, all of us have a common interest in preserving the park and trying to do what's best for the town. And although we might approach it differently, I don't necessarily see myself as on the other side of a fence or on another team with respect to Fort Williams. So um, I'm going to be supporting the um, referendum language because I think it's a good exercise in democracy. As a town councilor, I will certainly be influenced by the vote and will not try to undermine the popular will of the town um, in, you know, in, in the event that people come out and vote against paying for the fees. It'll just make the budget time easier when people are also saying not to raise taxes to um, look them in the eye and, and, and respond. So thank you. Further comments? Councilor Fritz. 
Um, <clears throat> I think some of the people that um, commented on the wording uh, have a, a valid point um, that this should be called a pay display parking fee. I don't. It, I think that makes it much clearer what it really is, not just a vague program. So I would like to move that we amend the wording uh, of the motion to say a pay display parking fee. I'll second that amendment. We should vote on the amendment. We should vote on the amendment. And is there discussion on a motion to amend? Is it permitted under the rules? Yes. Is there discussion on the motion? Councilor Mullins. Well, coincidentally, if Councilor Fritz had to mention it, I was going to make that same motion. I had written in the word fee right after the word parking uh, to complement what uh, Ms. Crane had said. And uh, I think she's right, although we're very much in the know of exactly what this is. And most of the public is, but not everyone going to the polls fully understands what they're being asked to vote on. And it just gives that little additional bit of explanation that we're talking about a parking fee at Fort Williams. Um, I, I wanted to respond to that. Um, the proposal that, that came to us um, recognized that Cape Elizabeth residents already pay for the park as part of their taxes. So I think it's, it would be a fee for some people, but it would not necessarily be a fee for Cape Elizabeth residents who are paying for the park through their taxes mm -hmm. already. So I, I think it's best to leave the language as program. And I'm certain that the debate and the letters and the news coverage will make very clear what the proposal is. And perhaps we can make sure that the proposal is on the website as well. But um, I, I would be concerned that to insert fee where the very people who are voting on this will not be facing a fee um, is not really accurate. May I respond? You may, and then I'd like to come in as well. Okay. Um, although I feel that Councillor Lynch is very well-meaning in those comments. However, we have already voted down the particular proposal that she is mentioning, meaning that if the referendum passes, it comes before the council completely new. And in that new format, the council, in their wisdom, or whoever brings it forward at that time, could have all the citizens paying a parking fee. There is no certainty that the citizens would not be paying a parking fee. Frankly, the, I, I think under Robert's rules, the only way it could come before this particular council would be to have someone who voted on the prevailing side bring it up. Otherwise, it would have to be an entirely new thing. But under Robert's rules, one of the four who voted against the program would have to bring it up. Well, since we're being technical, that technical uh, would have to happen within 30 days. And since the referendum is more than 30 days away, uh, that is not really applicable. Besides, the new council year starts in December anyways. And as I mentioned earlier, it's most likely that it would come up in the new council year. And you're starting all over from scratch. You could propose anything you want. And it, so truly, for, the, for full disclosure to the public, the word fee should be in there between parking and program. And whether the intent is for our citizens to pay that fee or for our citizens not to pay that fee is immaterial. Someone's going to be paying a parking fee. And you know we shouldn't try to sugarcoat it by not putting the word fee in there. Um, I'd like to come to that. <laughs> Councilor Dill. Um, I support the motion to uh, change the word program to fee. It is a fee. And to call it a program and to resist calling it a fee suggests that we're trying to hide something from the public. And that's not the case. Now, as to whether or not this applies to the citizens of Cape Elizabeth or whether it applies only to non-citizens citizens of Cape Elizabeth, the pay display proposal that was presented to us 
was clearly for non-residents of Cape Elizabeth. The wording of the referendum as proposed is intentionally broad and vague, as opposed to saying, would you favor the town establishing a paid display program consistent with the following and then laying out the specific item by item points of the paid display recommendation that was made to us. We intentionally are not doing that in order to reserve leeway to the council to be able to craft, modify in any way that's appropriate, including instead of charging $5 per day, perhaps charging an hourly rate that is substantially less than $5 for somebody who wants to come in and park for just an hour or even for two hours, or including charging Cape Elizabeth residents as well as non-residents. All of that is open for mm -hmm. modification, for tweaking in whatever form that council at the time thinks is appropriate in order to implement the program or fee. So I think it is a fee. Um, I'm not afraid of calling it a fee, and I'm afraid that if we resist calling it a fee and say, no, we don't want to call it a fee, we want to call it a program, it, telegraphs a message that we're trying to hide the fact that somebody's going to be paying money to park there. And I don't care what you call it, but it seems to be a fee to me, and I don't know why we wouldn't want to sort of call a spade a spade and a fee a fee. Only because of the confusion about resident and non-resident. Well, but this doesn't address residents right. versus non-residents, whether we call it a fee or a program. Okay. I, I need a longer I arm. Councilor Dill then wanted to comment, so <laughs> let's go to Councilor Dill because she had her hand up first, and then Councilor Swift Kayata. I, I was just going to suggest um, possibly saying um, I agree that the word fee is not, I don't have a problem with including the word fee, but the, the proposal was to charge a fee for non residents. So right. it seems to me if we're going to clarify that it's a fee, we should also clarify that the fee is for non residents. I would concur with my colleague to the left here. Um, it, I don't mind if we want to call it a fee, it's a fee. So that's fine with me. We can insert the word fee, but if we're in the interest, as you say, of being clear that we're talking about fees. But as far as I know, having served on the working group and having seen the working group's um, product, nobody's proposed the working group or anybody else has proposed that this be a fee for residents. So if we really want to be clear that it's a fee, we should be clear that it's a fee for non-residents only. So I would think that we would want to have a pay display parking fee program, or you could, you could get rid of the word program, fee for non-residents at Fort Williams because that's what everybody's been talking about that's what all the discussion's been about much of the discussion pro and con on this issue in the past few months has been about how Cape Elizabeth would be perceived because it would be charging people from out of town but not people from within town um, since they already pay through their property taxes so I think in the interest of clarity if we're going to have fee then we should make it be real clear and have it be non-resident fee so that's David. where I am. Councilor McKinney. I, I have listened patiently to, you know, everyone. And um, I've read all the newspapers. I've read all the characterizations. And I'm really bothered by the fact there's a lot of misinformation being printed and being um, stated. And what, what, what I mean by that is that when we, we talk about a parking pay display parking program at Fort Williams. It was never envisioned that the non-residents would pay for the park. And, I, and I've seen that quoted time and time again in the paper. That has never ever been part of the um, discussion. The only part, the, the difference between non-residents and residents is how they pay for the park. Residents already pay for the park. And whether we have a program like this or not, residents will continue to pay for the park. That's not going to change. Residents will continue to be taxed. However, the, the display will be a different item because you get a, a sticker 
that you use for the transfer station or the recycling station, whatever we want to call it, and it would have a dual purpose so that we don't have to reinvent the wheel and create more cost. But it's very important for people to understand that this whole idea is just to share the cost with all the, all the users of the park. The residents will continue to pay. The question is, should the residents pay more? Because we have maintenance issues and we have improvement needs, or should we share the cost with all of the park's users? So I think it's really important not to separate and put non-residents in there because I think it misrepresents what we're doing. Residents will pay a fee. It's just paid in a different manner. It's paid through taxation. And by the way, through statute, we cannot charge residents nothing to use the park. By statute, because it was federal, there are federal grants involved and so forth, we have to charge residents a fee or, or a tax, however you want to characterize it, something equivalent to what we would charge non-residents. And that's why we established, uh, the, the committee there established a very reasonable annual fee of $20 which is, is very reasonable. If you travel anywhere, you usually end up paying something to use, to, to access such a nice piece of property. So that's the first thing I want to state. I think it's really important that that gets out to the public, that we characterize this properly. Cape Elizabeth's residents will pay. They're just going to pay through taxes. And then the uh, other issue is, would we respect the vote on the referendum? Well, I, for one, would respect the vote. If the majority of the citizens of Cape Elizabeth said, we don't want a fee, then we're not going to have a fee as far as I'm concerned, my vote. If they say we want to have a fee, and they have that right, then I will support that as well. I think that's the right thing to do. And why are we having a referendum in the first place when it comes up time and time again? That, that, statement, I've heard that over and over again. In my mind, the reason the referendum is important is to settle the issue. The council can always vote four to three all day long. Every time you have a new council, we can have a new vote. The thought process was to get a referendum out there, let the citizens decide, and then we can proceed from there. Make a finding. Make a finding. No, excuse uh, me. Uh, Mr. Prince, at the beginning of our council meeting, you made a point of order. I'd like to make a point of order, and this is comments by the council at this point, on Councillor Fritz's motion to amend the proposed referendum language. It's nothing more and nothing less at this point. Okay. So to uh, conclude, we are not transferring the cost of Fort Williams, if this passes, to non-residents. All we are is sharing the cost of maintaining and improving the park because there are a lot of unmet needs at the park and we're going to have to find a way to pay for them. And that's why this came up in the first place. Thank you. So, so I'm going to support on Councillor Fritz's motion. I, I, I'm fine with if you want to put fee in there. I, I, to me, it's clear, but that's because I'm familiar with the pay display I, in other parts of the country. They use these widely. But if you want to put fee in there, uh, I'll support that. So just point of clarification, would it read under the motion a pay display parking fee? That's my motion. Okay. Yeah. That's the motion. I want to make sure we were clear. Fee at or fee program? Fee. Okay. Further, further. I'm, lim I'm eliminating the word program and substituting, and substituting fee. fee. Is there further discussion on Councillor Fritz's motion? Limited to that. Councilor Mullins. Well, I, I believe if we wound back the clock, the original wording was park fee program, whether you intended to say program or not at the time, uh, which is what I seconded. Uh, no, the motion was parking fee at Fort, what, Fort Williams Park, not parking fee program. Correct? So, are you withdrawing your second? No, I'm not withdrawing my second, but I think we should take 30 more seconds and go around and, and you know, I don't want to see this passed or killed because someone has a problem or not a problem with the word program. Make sure that, you know, a parking fee program is 
Okay, and then after we discuss that and vote on that, then if you want to make an amendment to add additional verbiage, then we could do that. Okay, now I'm going to make another point of order. The motion that has been made and seconded is for the language to read, would you favor the town establishing a pay display parking fee at Fort Williams Park to support park maintenance and improvements? Well, then my, my, we, my comment on that is, and not that, not that a referendum has to be perfect English, but it's not a pay display parking fee. It, it is a program. I mean, there's, there's more to it than saying just a park fee. Well, let's vote on the motion as made and seconded. And if it fails, then you want to make a further amendment, or whether even if it passes, you want to make a further amendment. OK. You may. So is there further discussion on the motion as I read? So, Hearing none, all those in favor of the amendment as made by Councilor Fritz and seconded by, I think it was Councilor Moles, <coughs> to change the word program to fee, to have it read, so we're all clear. Can Would I you favor the town establishing a pay display parking fee at Fort Williams Park to support park maintenance and improvements? All those in favor of that well, language? Hey, she's been trying to catch your attention. I just wanted to say, I certainly don't want the, the amendment or the motion to fail or risk this not going out to a vote on a lot of procedural wrangling. I have, I continue to have some concern, but I think it can be communicated to the public that this is a fee for non-residents. So I will vote for the word fee, and then I will work hard to communicate to residents that it is a fee for non-residents. So. That said, all those in favor of the amendment as made by Councilor Fritz. Opposed? The motion to amend is approved, seven in favor, none opposed. We are now back to um, a vote on the merits of the wording as, as now it. amended to send it out to referendum. Councilor Swift Kayat. I'd like to make a motion to amend the language. I'd like the language to, um, it, is, it now reads, as we just passed, would you favor the town establishing a pay display parking fee at Fort Williams Park to support park maintenance and improvements? And the amendment I would like to make um, is to add the word non-resident, yeah, that's one word, non-resident, so that it would read, would you favor the town establishing a pay display parking I've got to reword this because the English is bad. Would you favor the town establishing a pay display parking fee for non-residents at Fort Williams Park to support park maintenance and improvements? Second. Second. Councilor Dill. Discussion on the motion. Can Let's go, Councillor Lynch, Councillor McKinney, and Councillor Fritz. I'm going to order. try to address Councillor McKinney's issue because I think he was very um, persuasive in what he had to say before. But I think now that we are saying a pay display fee, that doesn't mean that people don't pay, residents pay in taxes. So I think it's it's a abundantly clear now that residents are still going to pay, but they are going to pay in taxes. So I think it's okay to say non-residents for a fee, because we know the residents will pay in another could, way. Excuse me, could I, uh, since I made the motion, could I just address my motion, please? Could just you, to, I'm sorry, could you Since I made the motion, could, I didn't get a chance to <laughs> address my motion before Councillor Lynch so, hopped in. Sorry. Um, is Councillor Lynch finished? I'm sorry. No, no, that's, is, that's okay. Is Councillor Lynch finished with her comments? I'm finished. You're finished? Okay, then Councillor Swift. I'm sorry. I, I, I just... And I'm sorry. No, we're both sorry. <laughs> um, I just wanted to explain 
why I added this fee for non-residents, because again, I am sensitive, like Councillor Lynch, I'm sensitive to Councillor McKinney's point, but I think the difference that I see and the reason that I'm proposing the fee for non-residents is that there will not be a fee for residents. I mean, the proposal was not to have a fee for residents. The proposal was and is and truthfully is in actuality the way it works is that residents will pay a tax non-residents will pay a fee and those are two different sorts of things one fee is sort of a use it's a, it's it's a user fee um, and um, so there are two different methods and that's why i think that there would the proposal was not to have fees for residents we all know that residents pay taxes and those taxes go to support the fort so that's why i think that's why I made the proposal. Enough said. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut in, but I just wanted to explain why I think it should be worded that way. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor McKinney. The problem I have with that is I think what it does is exactly what has been happening right along is um, in the characterization that Cape Elizabeth residents are trying to transfer the cost of supporting the park to non-residents, which is not true, but that's the way it's been characterized. We're just trying to share the cost. If, if in fact, we implement a program like that, the purpose of it was to share the cost with all users. And that's what needs to be um, communicated to the public. My concern is if you put non-residents on this referendum, it is going to be on the front page of the newspaper, and it's going to be characterized just as it has been mischaracterized right along. So I, I don't fit, I'm not in favor of that. I think people in this town are smart enough and well-educated enough to make a good decision and, and we're just going to have to make sure they're well-informed as to what this means. Mm -hmm. And if they're in favor of it or against it, that's fine. I'm sorry, ma'am. <laughs> Councilor Fritz. Um, I'm just wondering whether we can hear from one person we haven't heard anything from before. Well, I think that to bring in public comment in the midst of council discussion is distracting. It's completely inconsistent with our rules of procedure, and I think it's appropriate, as, as much as we're already struggling with this discussion, yeah. that to bring in additional comment from the public at this point would be um, inadvisable. So I'm going to respectfully and, and politely decline the opportunity for additional public comment in the midst of council discussion. Okay. Um, <clears throat> my comment in terms of the non-residents being included in here is I'm not absolutely clear what we are doing here. I mean, are we attaching a program that was proposed before that was already turned down to this referendum? Or is it totally open to be anything in the future? You know, we did turn that program down. Are we putting that before the voters and they're voting specifically on that? I mean, I think it's important to know so that is it non-residents or is it not? Is it, I mean, I plan on working against this if it gets on the ballot. And uh, frankly, I want to know what we're working against. Is it specifically this or is it not? Is it something else? Is it something vague in the future? Um, Council Lynch, I'll give you an opportunity to answer and then I will answer yeah. it as well. I think, Carol, you raise a very good question and that's why I would like to see the word non-resident in here. I think we need to have enough information in this mm -hmm. for the public to vote on it and know what they're voting on and for us to know what the public voted on. Mm -hmm. So um, and, and the proposal that came to us from the committee which was Citizens and the Fort Williams Advisory Commission was a parking proposal for non-residents. So I agree with you, Carol. I think we need to be at least specific enough to know whether we're voting on charging residents or non-residents. Mm -hmm. 
but then would that mean that if it passed this way, residents would never be charged? You know, if, if we end I'd up be, having I'd a lot fewer... I'd certainly be reluctant, if, and they get their money in If taxes. we can sort of maintain the, the flow, uh, again, of order, just so we can make progress here. And I think to answer Councilor Fritz's question, um, no, we are not putting the specific pay display recommendation that came to us from the pay display committee out for vote. This has been intentionally created to be open-ended to permit the council in the implementation of the program to modify it in whatever way it deems appropriate or to create in any way it deems appropriate. Okay, then my comment is then I don't think it should have the non-resident in there because it could be charged, the residents could be charged in, by, in a program that were approved by a future council. If there weren't uh, a lot of people coming into the fort paying parking fees and we still wanted to cover all the maintenance and improvements, then we might have to charge residents again and users. And for, since I haven't had a chance to comment on this particular aspect of it, um, I agree with Councilor Fritz. Um, and Councilor Lynch knows from discussions that we had before the meeting that I oppose the insertion of non-resident for the reason that because it's open-ended, um, we need to reserve the opportunity to amend the proposed program in any way that is deemed appropriate and whether all the fee you know one of the comments we had at last month's meeting and i don't remember who the gentleman was who made it i don't know maybe it was you mr prince who said i don't know which is worse the idea of charging a fee or just charging non-residents i mean there is some sentiment that if you're going to charge a fee charge everybody equally so um, i'm not in favor of the amendment to add the word Non-resident. Um, is there anybody who hasn't spoken yet on the motion that would like to? Councilor Moser, Councilor Dill. Then we'll go back to Councilor Swift Kayot as well. Yes, this is a point of information. So. Oh, thank you. Um, I was going to suggest that since there's, even though there's a difference of opinion about what language should we should use, it seems like the concern is similar, and that we're all concerned that the voters are um, clear on what they're voting for and it seems like um, it would be most clear if we just attached the pay display proposal that was in fact voted on at the last meeting but it was just a, a comment council Mills, have you spoken on this motion yet no then go ahead please um, two things first i think councillor fritz was right on in her comments, especially concerning that if the pay display system is implemented and we find that we're not collecting enough revenues to even pay for the cost of the equipment, then the, some council at a later date, which I won't be on by the way, may decide to you know, extend those fees to residents, those parking fees. Uh, so I, I have some concern about that non-resident language in that. And uh, Councillor Dill just made another point here. What was it you just said? Oh, I said <laughs> that uh, we all seem to be concerned about ambiguity in the uh, proposed language and suggested just attaching to the referendum itself the actual paid display proposal, every word of it. And my, my problem with that is that I don't really appreciate the way we ended up where we are at the moment, in that this came before the council, we had a public hearing on it, we had 28 or 29 people give us comment, 28, all but one were dead set against the original proposal, we had numerous emails on the issue, we voted, and then all of a sudden, the losing side on the vote comes forward with the idea to bring it to referendum, and that's essentially are, you know, ordering on a violation of our council rules in that we'd be voting twice on the same thing, whether it's sent to public referendum or not. It's just so close that I don't, I don't think it's appropriate to just attach that uh, 
proposal that we've already turned down and sent it. Council, I appreciate your comments, and they're all cogent, but I want to focus the discussion because I'm afraid we're wandering off course. There's a motion by Councilor Swift Kayata to add the word non-resident, and I'd like any comments to be focused solely on that motion at the moment. And if there's another motion made to attach the entire language, your comments are fully germane to that. But on Councilor Swift's motion to add the word non-resident. <laughs> Councilor Swift Kayata, sorry, <laughs> to add the word non-resident. Yeah, I don't favor adding those words. Thank you. Councilor Swift Kayata. Okay. Um, and this pertains to my motion. I went back to the minutes, which we all have because we voted on them earlier this evening, the minutes of last month's meeting. And what we did vote on last month, five to two, was to order the Cape Elizabeth Town Council to place the recommendations of the pay display working group to the public for a vote at the November 7, 2006 election. So I don't agree that we want to make this incredibly vague so that we can do any, we or future council can do anything in the future. I mean, no, no council can bind a future council. We all know that. that that's the way it works. But I will feel honored bound um, to pay attention to what uh, the voters say, you know, whether they want fees or don't want fees. But to get back to the um, reason for putting, uh, my suggestion for putting non-resident in there is I think that was a key component of the pay display working group's recommendation. And that is, as I recall the discussion from last month, it was very clear that we said, the, that five of us said, why don't we send this out to referendum so that the public can decide, because I think everyone is tired of the issue, um, no matter which side of the issue they're on. And so for that reason, I think since we voted last month specifically to relate it to the pay display working group's proposal, I think the key component of that proposal, as I understand it from my work on it, was that it was a non-resident fee. Councilor McKinney, and then I'd like to see us vote on the motion. I, I um, think that this is getting to the point <laughs> where we're, we're, uh, we're re-voting on, you know, what we're doing is putting, uh, if we do that, if we put the pay display program out there, I didn't realize the language was precisely, you know, as I just read it, but um, that, I don't think that was our intent. I think the intent was to see if the public is interested in a pay display program. But let me just comment on, on the issue of non-resident. The only way that would, I would be able to support that is it would have to say, would you favor the town establishing a non-resident pay display parking fee at Fort Williams Park to help support park maintenance and improvements? That clarifies it for me because it makes it clear that we're not asking non-residents to pay for the park, but to help support park maintenance and improvements. Could you read that language again, please? Just insert help. Uh, right before support, and you're okay. good to go. I, if you're suggesting a friendly amendment to my amendment, then I, I am. I, then That's I a, could. That I am. Then I could I, I would accept that, that friendly because amendment. It clarifies amendment. the language for me, and I think it makes it clear to the public, and then they know what they're voting for, and how it would, what it would look like, would be up to the council at that time, if it in fact passes. If it right. fails, then I think we should. Put it behind us Take a well-deserved rest. <laughs> um, so, in a, well, I don't know. Did you second? I can't remember who seconded my motion, my motion to amend. I did. So did you accept his friendly amendment? I will gladly accept your friendly amendment. So, as I understand it, to be clear, you want me to the wording now would be, would you favor the town establishing a pay display parking fee for non-residents at Fort Williams Park to help support park maintenance and improvements. Correct. That's fine. So that's what my amendment, my motion is. Okay. Further discussion on that motion? But I'm still assuming that we don't have anything specific. Correct. And it could change. It still could be all 
parking, all, all people using the park would have to pay is what a council could. Well, theoretically, yes, but I think we. Can, can we yes. not have dialogue back and forth? This doesn't get us anywhere. I think she, well, she was looking to, I'm sorry. to clarify. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have looked at If we can direct comments through the chair, it'll just hopefully keep us focused. Okay. Thank you. Um, We have a motion to call the question. Yes, please. All those in, all those in favor of the motion as it currently stands, with the amended language, to help support. All those in favor? Opposed. The motion is approved. Four in favor. Councilors Fritz, Moles, and Backer opposed. Now we have the underlying motion. Is that right. not right? Yes. That was a As further a amendment of the wording to go out for referendum, which now brings us to sending the motion out to referendum. With this language. With this language. We need a motion. It wasn't there. No, it's a motion. Oh, okay. Well, okay. So, now we're going so well, just so we know where we are. That, yeah. just trying so all to those that. in favor of sending the amended language out to vote and just for clarity, let me just read the language that we are voting on. Would you favor the town establishing a paid display parking fee for non-residents at Fort Williams Park to help support park maintenance and improvements? All those in favor? Opposed? Or in favor, Councilors Fritz, Smalls, and Backer, opposed? Thank you all for your patience with that. <sighs> Item number 146-2006, executive session request. I'll move that in accordance with one MRSA section 405 paragraph 6D that we enter executive session to receive an update and to discuss negotiations involving Cape Elizabeth Police Benevolent Association. I second the motion. Um, if I want to discuss um, upcoming meetings, does that need to be before there's a vote on this? No, you can. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, we had a motion by Councilor McKinney, a second? I'm sorry. Motion, motion by, by Councilor Fritz. Second by Councilor McKinney. Yes. Discussion on the motion? Yes, discussion. Discussion being, are we going to come back and vote <laughs> on anything tonight or not? I do not anticipate that we'll vote on this issue. Is that a no? No, that's a no. We will not be coming back to vote. Since, since that's a no, I don't think there's anyone, but maybe we should see if there's any further uh, public discussion of items not on the agenda before we disappear for 45 minutes. I'm happy to do that. Any citizens here who would like to speak on items not on our agenda? Seeing none. Thank you, though. Oh, um, all those. I, I did have one, one comment I wanted to make, not on our agenda. Uh, as the council knows, I happen to serve as vice chairman of the Cumberland County Budget Advisory Committee, and we're starting our uh, fall budgetary sessions. The Cumberland County does its budgets in the fall, and I've sat with the county manager, and we've had a preliminary discussion on the county budget, and uh, through much hard work by the county manager in the face of extreme rising costs, especially medical costs at the Cumberland County Jail, and the uh, cost of living increases uh, by the different county employees, probably looking at right about a 5% uh, tax increase in the county budget towards the towns, which budget is a very small component of the town budgets. But I just thought I'd uh, make that notice to the council so as you're watching the, the budget hearings that will be coming up, I have some foreknowledge of what, what we're looking at for the county budget. Thank you. Thank you for that report. All those in favor of the motion to enter executive session consistent with the motion? Motion is approved, seven in favor, none opposed. Now before we go off the air, um, I would like to note that on Thursday, 
September 14, just uh, three days from now, uh, the council will be holding a workshop. We will be meeting off-site for that workshop. We will be meeting at the day one building at Fort Williams Park at 6.30 in the evening uh, to view that building. And from there, we will proceed to the Spurwink Church to meet with the Spurwink Church Study Committee. So if anyone is interested in joining the town council for its workshop on Thursday, it'll be in two locations. First at Fort Williams at the day one building mm -hmm. on Officers Row, and then second at the Spurwink Church. And... David, I just have a question on that. Yes. Maybe better directed to the town manager, but by the time we get to Spurwink, it's pretty dark these days, and I'm wondering if we are there to be looking at work, are we going to have enough daylight to accomplish that? Good point. It's actually a good point because um, <laughs> a lot of the issue with the church is the foundation and That's the outside. Like, I knew that. Yeah. So I'm wondering if we should meet earlier. Or do we want to reverse Reverse's. the order? No, because the park gets dark, because the park has no lighting, whereas the Spurwing Church has a big spotlight on it. Uh, the, the church will be a little bit on the dark side, but I have, yeah, we'll, we'll do a major purchase of a few flashlights uh, if you need to look at the foundation. It might be a little bit dark, but you know, we'll be there at, we'll arrive at dusk, and it'll be an incentive for the council to move through the first building quickly. <laughs> okay. Get on to the next. Some of us church. may go over so, there before. So in the church. future, we're going to have council meetings outdoors? Yeah, that might help. <laughs> okay. um, and then our next town council workshop is on Wednesday, October 11, uh, at 7.30 p.m., annual review of the audit and other business to be determined. And our next town council meeting will be on October 12. I'm all set. I'm all set. Rest and we are moving into executive session.